If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. For part A, in order to find the capacitance, we can refer to the following equation. According to the equation, the capacitance will equal a constant multiplied by the area of one of the plates divided by the distance that separates the plates. Now, the question notes the area in centimeters squared as well as the separation between the plates in millimeters. We need to convert those values into their standard units. So let's do that first. Let's take the 40 centimeters squared and let's convert it into meters squared. Now, to do that, we want to note that one meter contains 100 centimeters. But since we have centimeters squared, that actually means we have to square this conversion factor. That way, the centimeters squared will cancel with this centimeters squared, and we'll be left with meters squared. So let's pick up our calculators and compute this area. And when we perform that computation, we should get 0 0.004 meters squared. So that's going to be the area of one of the plates. And then the plate separation is given to us in millimeters, so we're going to convert that into meters by noting that one meter contains 1,000 millimeters. This way the millimeters will cancel and we'll be left with 0 0.001 meters. So now that we have those values in their standard form and we know this constant is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, we can plug everything into the formula. And when we compute this, we should get a capacitance equal to approximately 3.5 times 10 to the minus 11th, and the standard unit of capacitance is in farads. If you need to convert that into picofarads, you can note that one farad contains 10 to the positive 12 picofarads. And so the farads would cancel, and then when you type that into your calculator, you would get 35 picofarads. So that would be an equivalent answer to part A. Now for part B, to calculate the magnitude of the charge on each plate, we recall that the charge on the plate of a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the potential difference between the plates. Now we have already figured out the capacitance in part A. Notice we're using the value in farads because that is the standard unit. And then the potential difference is stated in the question to be 600 volts. So all we have to do is multiply. And when we do that, we get 2.1 times 10 to the minus eighth, and the standard unit of charge is coulombs. If we needed to convert that into nanocoulombs, we could say that one coulomb is equivalent to 10 to the ninth nanocoulombs. And so when you perform that computation, you would get 21 nanocoulombs. So again, either answer in coulombs or nanocoulombs would be correct. For part C, we can calculate the stored energy by using the following equation that again applies to capacitors, sort of reminiscent of kinetic energy, but this is the electrical energy that's stored on the plates of the capacitor. And so all we have to do is multiply one half by the capacitance, and then by the potential difference squared. And when we do that, we should get 6.3 times 10 to the minus sixth in the standard unit of energy is joules. We could also convert that into microjoules by noting that one joule is equivalent to 10 to the positive 6 microjoules. And that way the joules cancel. And when you perform that conversion, you should get 6.3 microjoules. So the answer can be expressed in the microjoules or in the joules. For part D, the electric field between the plates of a capacitor is simply the potential difference divided by the plate separation. So all we have to do is take 600 volts and divide by the plate separation. Don't forget to use the meters units for the plate separation, which you can write as 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, or if you recall from earlier, that was also 0 0.001 meters. And when you compute that, you should get 6 times 10 to the fifth and since we divided a potential difference by a distance, we would have volts per meter. And so this is the correct answer to part D. Finally, to part E, the energy density between the plates, which we can symbolize with a lowercase u, that is simply equal to the amount of energy that's stored on the plates divided by the volume of the region between the plates. Now, 
for the volume of the region between the plates, what we can do is take the area of one of the plates and multiply it by the plate separation. In essence, where that is coming from can be understood by considering a volume that's sort of shaped like a rectangular prism. One of the plates of the capacitor would be, let's say, right here, and then the other plate would be located behind, so back here would be the second plate. And what we're looking for is the volume of the space between the plates, so basically this orange region right here. That's just the volume of this little box right here. Now typically the volume of a box would be the length times the width times the height, but what we can do is express that in a slightly different way. This distance right here is the plate separation, and then instead of saying length and height, we can actually multiply those two values to give us the area of that rectangular shaped plate. So basically to get the overall volume, instead of doing length times width times height, we can do the area multiplied by the plate separation. So that's where that A times D is coming from. We can go ahead and plug in the energy that we computed earlier. We'll divide by the area, which we also found earlier, and then the plate separation. Notice again we're using the standard units. And when we compute that we should get 1.6 and then the units will be joules over, and now we have a meter squared times a meter, which will become meter cubed. So this would be the correct answer to part E.